I'm Dan Small. Whether you like deer for their inherent beauty, elusive nature, and wariness, as challenging quarry and a fine source of free-range protein, or for many of us, all of the above, then stay tuned. We'll share the latest forecast for the area where you hunt, talk with successful hunters, hear about threats to the future of deer hunting, and share other important news for all who care about the white-tailed deer. Welcome to Deer Hunt Wisconsin 2018. What is it about the white-tailed deer that fuels such passion among people of all ages and from all walks of life? I'm going to continue to pile on different experience and opportunities and, and to me that's the, that's the most exciting part about it. They're big, they're beautiful, they're elusive. You can chase the white-tailed deer for an entire lifetime and still not know all that there is to know about these amazing animals. I'll always be optimistic about deer hunting in Wisconsin. It's something I just it's so much a part of my blood, so much a part of my family's history, the Wisconsin history. I have a hard time thinking it's ever going to go away. Some of America's best outdoor writers and editors who also have a passion for white-tailed deer live, work, and hunt right here in Wisconsin. We asked them about the challenges and opportunities for the future of deer hunting. Face it, conservation in Wisconsin, not just Wisconsin, but across the country, uh, relies on people buying hunting licenses, fishing licenses, and trapping licenses to fund this conservation work. We already have a, a pretty good cadre of deer hunters with over 600,000 deer hunters buying licenses every year. That's a great base to work off of, but I think there's a lot of room to get uh, kids and even older adults who may not have tried hunting yet to get them into hunting. You worry when you look at it right now We've gotten to be where our average age of hunters is in the 50s. And how are we going to replace all these guys? And well, we aren't going to replace all of them. But the thing I'm always confident about when it comes to deer hunting is that you look at our history, and there's a passion there in Wisconsin deer hunting's history that I can't believe it'll never not be here. It'll always be here in some form. It just won't be the way I probably grew up deer hunting. You know, you have to ask questions, is technology hurting the resource in any way. Resource agencies have done a pretty good job of realizing where technology might have an impact and then craft the rules for that particular species or season to work within the realm of the technology. If you look at the history of um, the technology in hunting, it's really hard to look at too many items and say, that changed the face of hunting. And I think, no, we kind of, Eventually, you figure out some of this stuff is gimmicks. It doesn't really work that great after all, and it goes by the wayside. One of the biggest challenges we face in deer hunting and deer management overall in Wisconsin is chronic wasting disease. People were aware of it in the western states, uh, Colorado and Wyoming, but probably weren't tracking it on a daily basis like we do here now. And uh, so now I think we have a, a very good awareness of what chronic wasting disease could mean and probably will mean in Wisconsin if we don't get a better handle on a management of it. And uh, when I say management, I don't necessarily know that we can ever get rid of it, but we're gonna have to try to find a way to live within the fact that we're dealing with, with chronic wasting disease. Right now, I, I hunt in an area where there's a lot of CWD. It's where I grew up hunting, and now I, I'm still hunting there as, adult, as an adult. And every deer we shoot now, we get tested. Just because, you know, for, for one thing, um, I don't want to feed my family something. If I can't say with some certainty that uh, this is good, good wholesome meat, I still trust deer meat more than I do anything I buy. So it's always these things we, we balance and we weigh. And the, the thing I remind people all the time too of deer hunting is that nothing you eat in the food chain is totally safe. You can't ever get everything so dialed in that everything's gonna be perfectly safe for us. Scent killer gold attacks a wide range of odors, but most importantly, human odor. 
To make things even better, Wildlife Research Center just came out with Hunt Dry Technology Plus. It's now 99% effective at stopping replicated human odor 20 days after drying in testing at Rutgers University. It's simple. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. Want to be a better hunter, a better angler? Then subscribe to the best outdoor publication in the state, Outdoor News. You'll receive the latest outdoor news and information hunters want and anglers need. In each issue, you'll learn where the fish are biting, the best hunting spots, lake maps, tips from pros, and timely outdoor news you won't find anywhere else. Best of all, it's all about Wisconsin outdoors. Subscribing is easy. Just go to OutdoorNews.com or call 800-535-5191. Outdoor News is the sportsman's choice for outdoor information. You never know when you might need different camo, but who wants to pack it all? That's why there's VersaSkin's multi-camo outerwear. The VersaSkin's base jacket and pant come in real tree edge, but can be quickly skinned for waterfowling, blaze, or snow. VersaSkin's patented quick switch system lets you change camos within two minutes. So there's no need to buy or pack multiple camouflage outfits. VersaSkin's, just change the skin for the season you're in. I'm John with Grand Prairie Outdoors. We're in the GRO education plot. What we are doing here is we got two acres of land. We got over 30 blocks of forages that are 10 feet wide by 100 feet long. People can see the differences between Ladino clover or alfalfa, different perennials. Whether you're an experienced or a new food plotter, tilt the table in your favor for having success. You can reach us at www.grandprairieoutdoors.com is our website. Grand Prairie Outdoors, we're a seed and nutrition company. Deer Hunt Wisconsin 2018 is brought to you by the Wisconsin Department of Tourism. Visit TravelWisconsin.com and let the fun begin. By Wisconsin Outdoor News, the sportsman's choice for news and information. WisconsinOutdoorNews.com By Scent Killer Gold, America's top brand. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. And by the Honda Pioneer 1000 Side-by-Side, -side, the biggest member of the Pioneer family. Powersports.Honda.com Natural resources agencies all across America are coordinating with each other and partners to recruit adult hunters as well as youth. And Wisconsin is a leader in this effort as our next guest explains. R3 is recruitment, retention, reactivation of hunters, anglers, and shooting sports participants. We in Wisconsin have seen a decline in the number of hunters over the past 10 to 12 years. Now it's not a steep decline yet at this point, but it is going down and it's expected to go down a lot steeper in the future. Mentoring new hunters or recruiting new hunters, training new hunters is really an important facet for all of us who are current hunters because it really relates back to our relevancy, our participation in the ecosystem, our participation in conservation. People need to learn more about that, and they love to learn about conservation funding. They love to learn about the other species you're going to see out there. They love to learn about watching the woods wake up. But all of these things, if we can pass them along to new people, this is going to increase our relevancy and sustain our heritage as hunters. Deer hunting is really a big hook when it comes to the big protein piece that's walking around on the landscape. If you kill a deer, you've got meat for a year, or you've got meat for a long time. So people are very interested in deer hunting from a food perspective, but they're also really interested in, in the experience that they get, seeing what other uh, animals might be walking around out there, turkeys, other kinds of wildlife. You have a coyote run through. These are all the great things that deer hunters already understand and that people who might be curious about hunting are really interested in finding out and learning about in addition to the skills that include butchering, preparation of meat, field dressing, and then the hunting skills and the shooting skills. So for all the hunters out there who are thinking that they want to participate in R3, recruitment, retention, and reactivation, one very key thing to make sure is that your experience, be it hunting, fishing, deer, turkey, bluegills, whatever it is, is connected to another experience so that new participants don't only get the one and done, but they get to go to a bluegill fishing event, they get to go to a deer hunting event, they get to go to a turkey hunting event, they get to go to a pheasant hunting event or program, so they have all these various skills and trainings in their back pocket. Because if you think about it, 
When we started hunting, it was not a one and done deal, that's for sure. We had a mentor who took us along again and again and again <laughs> until we had the tools and skills and we felt confident enough to keep going on our own. So that's a very key thing to remember is that make sure your programs or your activities are connected to another experience for novice hunters. One of the big traditions with deer hunting is the deer camp. Getting people together, hanging out, having some good food, good conversation the night before or during the deer camp, and then actually going on the hunt. And that kind of tradition is really something that people are very interested in finding out more about. And we're finding that to be uh, an effective recruitment tool. Long-time hunters, including some who have stopped hunting, are getting re-engaged because they want to pass along their knowledge to future generations. And they're discovering that beyond the excitement of the hunt and the savory mealtime fruits of their labor, that there are additional benefits for wildlife, hunters, and conservation. I'm talking about the joys and rewards of being a mentor. I enjoyed mentoring my kids so much as they grew up. And now that they're growing up, I felt there was a void and I wanted to reach out to that next youth that I didn't know or that fr child of a friend that I knew didn't hunt fish or trap. So I invited them along and took them out and just seeing the joy on their face, being able to experience nature, conservation at its best, it was rewarding like you wouldn't believe. Mentoring is a big, big, uh, big part of what we're talking about here. And it is a, it's an important part of what we're doing it's also rewarding for the people who do it, the people who take the time to mentor. It's a very personal situation that takes a lot of time and a lot of dedication, and I think there are rewards on both ends for the adult and the, men the person being mentored. They both are gonna learn, and they're both gonna have a good time, and because of that, I think that person, that person being mentored is gonna catch on, take an interest, and be involved in, in the outdoors for the rest of their life. Nine-year-old Sierra Moore hunted with her mom and dad this year during the youth deer hunt. Here's that story. We all three went into the blind before light and we sat, I sat till about 9, 30, 10 o'clock and I decided, you know, I'm gonna get out and I'm gonna go help my son. And uh, I got back into the stand about three o'clock and they hadn't seen much. And so we sat for another hour, hour and a half probably before we started to see some action. And that first deer came out and it was a good young deer, but for a kid like that, it's an awesome opportunity to give them some experience. So we were gonna shoot that deer. Thankfully, it took as long as it did for that deer to kind of square up to us. And all of a sudden my wife said, Jerry, there's another buck, there's a, a bigger buck. There's another one in the woods. And I kind of peeked around the corner and Sierra couldn't see him yet. And I said, that's the one you wanna shoot. And that was a big deer. I mean, I got excited. Finally, Sierra could see him and you could hear her breathing start to pick up. And we're all very excited at that moment. And when that deer came in, he just wouldn't give her that broadside shot. Thankfully, the deer ended up actually working his way all the way to the end of the food plot. He was over 100 yards out at that point. He turned, he went broadside, and her mom said to her, he said, Sierra, you gotta shoot. You're gonna have to shoot. And it was like, that was that moment where she just, you know, she settled in and boy, she smoked him. And, and the mule kick was awesome. And we're just, you know, I have this huge rush of excitement because I feel like she hit the deer really well you know, I couldn't have been happier. So it was an easy track. It was a, um, you know, the deer didn't go far, but it was a great opportunity for Sierra to see the whole thing. You know, the idea of we're gonna, we're gonna wait a little bit, we're gonna get down, we're gonna follow this track. And, and then the celebration at the end, you know, you just can't beat that. Wow. Oh, you so excited. Dude, how do you girls ever gonna hunt again? <laughs> Thank you, hunters. You do so much for conservation and for Wisconsin's economy. When you buy hunting gear, fill your gas tanks on hunting trips, shop at local stores, eat at cafes and restaurants, and stay at motels throughout Wisconsin, you create a $4 billion ripple effect to help local businesses survive and thrive. This great economic impact is one of many ways that hunting works for Wisconsin. The fastest and most compact crossbow has arrived. Introducing the Nitro X from 10 point. Measuring an ultra narrow seven inches wide, the Nitro X unleashes supercharged speeds up to 440 feet per second, generating jaw dropping kinetic energy and unmatched downrange accuracy. The all new Nitro X from 10 point. 
Deer Hunt Wisconsin 2018 is brought to you by the Range of Ridgefield, the ultimate shooting experience, therangewi.com. By Ten Point Crossbow Technologies, perfection lives here, tenpointcrossbows.com. And by Johnson's Sausage Shop and Catering of Rio, Wisconsin, taking your venison from deer camp to freezer camp, johnsonsausage.com. Mentors also volunteer at events that help recruit future outdoor sports enthusiasts. And one of the largest of these is the Midwest Outdoor Heritage Education Expo, held each May just 20 minutes north of Madison. Our youth is what we work for. I mean, we're trying to perpetuate an environment for future generations that uh, will enjoy the things that we've learned to enjoy through our lifetime. We have an uphill battle, I, I will say that. Uh, you know, there's, there's a, a lot of people that have been taught for a long period of time that the things that are conservation principles are no longer realistic, and that isn't true. I mean. Aldo Leopold and the people that started this whole movement and before them even understood the base values. It isn't preservation, it's conservation. As you look around most conservation meetings, the, uh, the great denominator is gray hair. And uh, we need to stop that. We need to involve young people in it so that there's a future for us. And events like this enable uh, young people uh, to get an exposure to uh, different things. The Mohi event is, is a great opportunity for us to reach kids that ordinarily don't see hunting opportunities and outdoor activities. Walking in the grass and seeing all these trees together is, is a different experience. So we're trying to bring them in and just at least open their eyes and have another viewpoint shown to them. NASP stands for the National Archery in the Schools program. The program is run during the physical education class. It's done that way because those teachers have access to the gym. But it's also done as part of science, math classes, outdoor skills classes, outdoor education classes, and at the high school level, a lot of the lifetime skills programs. The ultimate goal, obviously, is to get them to continue on in the outdoor skills programs and get back into the outdoors and enjoy nature. Events like this often spark an interest in these activities, so organizers provide participants with information about where to go from here. Students and educators learn about mentored outdoor skills training programs throughout the year. So any expo guest can take the next step toward becoming a safe and ethical outdoors person. Another way you can get involved in furthering the hunting ethic and tradition is by participating in the Spring Fish and Game Hearing and Conservation Congress meeting in your county in April. Here are the current and former chairman to tell us more. The Wisconsin Conservation Congress is the only body in the nation where a state has in statute a citizen advisory board to advise the Natural Resources Board and the DNR, Department of Natural Resources, on all resource issues. It's a really unique group. It was founded about 85 years ago by Aldo Leopold, a UW professor who was the first person to uh, look at science and, and applying that to biological use of our resource. So they created a system where there's five people from all 72 counties in Wisconsin that get elected by the citizens of their county to represent them on resource issues. Next year is gonna be our first year that we're gonna have opportunities for sportsmen and women to give their input via online. We haven't had that before. We don't know what it's gonna be like, but I'm open-minded enough to give it an opportunity. We're all getting older. We need that next generation to step up and be the conservation ambassadors. That's why we started the Youth Conservation Congress. Youth Conservation Congress was for eighth grade through seniors in high school that wanna get involved with conservation and shaping of our rules and regulations within the state. The Ranger Ridgefield is already known as your ultimate shooting experience with 12 indoor lanes, a helpful and knowledgeable staff, and a great selection of handguns. They have now expanded into the long gun market, dealing in Benelli, Franke, Stoger, Winchester, and Browning. Located at the split of highways 41 and 45, the Ranger Ridgefield is a great place to sight in that old deer rifle or check out what's new in long guns. You now have a new option when it comes to finding your next hunting rifle or shotgun. 
Johnson's Sausage Shop in Rye, Wisconsin, has been providing hand-me-down family recipes of meats and cheeses for over 17 years. Old world influences and modern practices combine at Johnson's to produce incredible meats and sausages. Their philosophy of buy local, eat fresh ensures the highest quality, taste, and sustainability. Johnson's provides custom cut, processing, and packaging of your beef, pork, lamb, or wild game. Their ability to cater to all requests has been keeping hunters from Wisconsin and abroad happy for years. Johnson's Sausage Shop. Eat deliciously. Is it better to be strong or smart? Well, when you combine a class-leading 999cc engine with the industry's first and only intelligent four-wheel drive system, the answer is simple. It's better to be both. The Pioneer 1000 Limited Editions, the newest members of the growing Pioneer family from Honda. Deer Hunt Wisconsin 2018 is brought to you by the Wisconsin Department of Tourism. Visit TravelWisconsin.com and let the fun begin. By Wisconsin Outdoor News, the sportsman's choice for news and information. WisconsinOutdoorNews.com By Scent Killer Gold, America's top brand. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. And by the Honda Pioneer 1000 Side-by-Side, -side, the biggest member of the Pioneer family. Powersports.honda.com some mentors help people develop their passion for whitetail early in life. Others help people we call adult onset hunters, like our next guest, Dawn Zialecki of West Allis, who learned to hunt for food as an adult, and in fact, she hunted right here in this orchard. I have goose hunted, I have rabbit hunted, I have pheasant hunted, and that's all part of the Learn to Hunt program. And then in 2014, a coworker of mine advertised a learn to hunt for food for deer hunting. And another coworker and I, another female coworker, and I decided we were going to take the class. And I was successful. Got my first doe. I was very excited. It was it was amazing. I was able to interest my daughter into hunting. Um, we did pheasant hunting and we did goose hunting and we were both successful with that and also dove hunting. Uh, my husband also started hunting again. He hunted when he was younger, and he did get his first deer when he was in his 50s. It was a nice October afternoon just like this. Brought my chair and my crossbow, um, and I got my blinds set up around 5 o'clock, seven minutes before close. I saw the white tail of a deer coming to the right of me, up to the apple tree, and my husband texts me, and he's like, it's dark, come in, and I, at the same time, shot the doe, and I jumped out of my blind because I knew she took off, and I'm like, I gotta find out where she's going. We were driving up the road, and I just happened to be looking off to the right, and there she was laying there, and I was like, there she is. I have no service on my phone, can't look up a video, and I'm like, I don't know how to do this, and he's like, well, just start very carefully cutting. So I started very carefully cutting and I was able to uh, successfully field dress the deer. It took me about, I would say, probably an, an hour. <laughs> and then I took it in to get it processed. I like to deer hunt because then I have the venison and it's, I can make a lot of things with it and it provides a lot of food. For Dawn or anyone who needs a refresher, here's a quick look at how I field dress a deer. I always put on a pair of field dressing gloves. You can get these at just about any sporting goods store. But the surgeon's glove goes right over the top of that. And we're all set. Now the first cut I always make is at the other end of the deer. So if you come around with me, I'll show you how we get started. And the first cut is actually right around the anal opening. Now you can just cut off the genitals if you want to. If you remove them like this, you'll actually be able to pull them back through the body cavity with the rest of the entrails. We'll come up to the brisket and find the bottom of the breastbone. And I'm going to make a puncture, not too deep. You take the gut hook, find that opening, and it's basically just like unzipping the deer. Now, back to the knife, and I'm going to go up into the 
rib cage and cut the diaphragm. You want to cut that as close to the rib cage as possible. And while I'm here, I'm going to go up and loosen the lungs and the heart. Now we finish cutting around the diaphragm. We should be able to roll all the entrails right out. Back to the third use of this tool. If you cut the brisket a little bit, you can spread the body cavity out and it helps cool the meat off. Let them drain a little bit. And I don't leave these in the woods. Pack them out with you. That's all there is to it. This year's regulations are essentially the same as last year, so let's recap them here. You can purchase your license and select your antlerless tags, now called harvest authorizations, through the Go Wild system online or from a licensing agent. With each deer hunting license, you'll receive one buck harvest authorization valid in any unit statewide and one or more farmland zone antlerless deer harvest authorizations valid in the deer management unit and land type of your choice. You no longer have to validate a carcass tag in the field or attach it to your deer. But while hunting, you must still carry proof that you have a license and the appropriate harvest authorizations for the area you're hunting and the type of deer, buck or doe, that you shoot. Proof can be in the form of a Go Wild conservation card, your authenticated Wisconsin driver's license, printed copies of your license and harvest authorizations, or a digital copy of these documents displayed on a smartphone or tablet. For smartphone users, the DNR now has a new Hunt Wild app to make all these steps easier, even in the field. As you complete your license purchase, you'll be asked if you'd like to make a donation to the Cherish Wisconsin Outdoors Fund a permanent endowment that helps support habitat management on state properties. It's an easy way to help ensure our wild lands will continue to provide the habitat that shelters deer and other wildlife, and I encourage you to do it. And to help defray the cost of your hunting license, Legendary Whitetails will send you a $25 electronic gift card if you send them a photo of your deer hunting license. Details at huntonus.com. With each license they purchase, youth hunters ages 10 through 17 will receive a junior antlerless deer tag, valid for taking one antlerless deer in any unit statewide. Youth hunters are not required to specify the zone or unit, but they must indicate whether they plan to hunt private or public access land. And there are special opportunities for Class A or C disabled hunters as well. These are spelled out in the regulations and online. Bonus antlerless harvest authorizations went on sale in August and they may be sold out for some units and land types. They may be purchased at the rate of one per day until the unit is sold out or the season ends. All deer taken must still be registered by 5 p.m. on the day after harvest and you'll need your harvest authorization number to do that. You can register a deer easily online or by phone. Instructions are printed right on the harvest authorization tag. You may also register a deer at participating walk-in stations. Search for these on the DNR website or look for one of these deer registration station signs. This year, the nine-day firearms deer season runs from November 17th through the 25th. The muzzleloader season runs for 10 days immediately following the gun season, November 26th through December 5th. And in eight metro zone subunits, the firearm season runs through December 5th. Some metro zone subunit boundaries have changed, and there's a new metro zone in Eau Claire and Chippewa counties, and one in Rock County as well. Several of these units offer free antlerless harvest authorizations, so check the regulations for these changes before you hunt. The four-day statewide December antlerless deer hunt will run from December 6th through the 9th, but only in deer management units that allow antlerless harvest. There's no antlerless harvest in Iron County this year. The antlerless only holiday hunt runs from December 24th through January 1st in all or part of the 19 farmland zone counties shown on this map. To participate, you or someone in your party must have an unused antlerless harvest authorization for the unit where you're hunting. Unless you've worked with our land experts, you don't know what to expect. And until you've shared this with us, 
you won't know what you're missing. We are hunters and land professionals alike. We are United Country, serving you on your quest for hunting or recreational property. Bottom line, we work for you. You see hunting properties. Stand on your investment. Mech Shooting Sports has been a leader in the reloading industry since 1955. And now we're proud to introduce the all new Metallic line, featuring the latest in reloading products, the Mech Marksman. It features a patent pending self centering shell holder for greater reloading accuracy and consistency, and is compatible with all 7 8 14 thread dies, so you can change calibers quickly. The all new Metallic line and Mech Marksman continue the reloading heritage from the brand you trust. I'm Travis T-Bone Turner, co-host of Bone Collector and a proud member of Whitetails Unlimited. Do you have buck fever? You can ease the pain by holding or attending a Whitetails banquet in your neck of the woods. These action-packed events offer great food and prizes, guns galore, and so much more. 50 cents out of every net dollar raised is spent on projects in your hometown. Call this number or go to our website to find events and a field director for your area. Get started today and find a cure for that old buck fever. If you already have a place to hunt, you'll be interested in our upcoming forecast for your part of the state. But first, let's take a quick look at how to find a place to hunt on public lands all across Wisconsin. Most areas of federal, state, and county forest land are open to public hunting. Other public access lands include managed forest law and forest crop law lands open to public hunting, and voluntary public access lands leased for public hunting. All other properties are considered private land and hunters must have permission to access these lands. You'll find public land open to hunting in the Public Access Lands Atlas, available in book form and on the DNR website under keyword maps. Last winter was mild to moderate in most of the state. Antlerless harvest quotas were reduced in some northern counties, but for most of the state they are at or above last year's levels. Fawn production was good and bow hunters are seeing plenty of deer, so all indicators point toward another excellent deer hunting season. Here's a forecast for the upcoming gun deer seasons provided by DNR biologists from around the state. Mild winters, lower antlerless harvest, and plenty of habitat have led to increased deer numbers throughout the southern district, all of which falls within the southern farmland zone. With lower antlerless harvest the past few years, you should see a few more deer than last fall. The Southern District has a wide variety of deer habitat types from the wooded ridges and coolies in the Southwest to the flatter urbanized landscape of Waukesha, Racine and Kenosha counties, rolling Southern kettles in the East and the extensive wetlands and woodlands of the Central counties. This variation in habitat types and conditions results in local deer numbers that vary from one square mile to the next. Deer numbers are higher in the western portion of the district, but there are good opportunities to shoot a deer in any of the district's counties. Most southern district deer are taken on private property, which makes up more than 90% of the landscape. But good deer hunting can also be found on thousands of acres of county, state, and federally owned land open to deer hunting, including a number of state parks. Chronic wasting disease continues to increase both in prevalence and geographic area. Recent CWD positive animals found in Dodge, Milwaukee, and Washington counties have put into effect a baiting and feeding ban there. Within the Southern District, baiting and feeding is now allowed only in Ozaki, Racine, and Kenosha counties. Most of the West Central District experience a pretty mild to average winter in regard to temperatures and snow depth. An early spring snowstorm that dumped a foot of snow in most areas really didn't impact fawn production due to the warm temperatures that followed. Chippewa, Clark, Eau Claire, and La Crosse counties all made modifications to metro subunit boundaries, so hunters there should pay attention to those changes. A number of counties along the western side of the district 
haven't had a comprehensive CWD sampling effort in a decade, so this fall, sampling will occur within every county of the district. Cooperation from hunters in this effort is important if we are to meet sampling goals. Sampling stations are set up in every county with self-service kiosks and a network of cooperating taxidermists and meat processors. Visit dnr.wi.gov keyword CWD sampling to identify sampling locations prior to your hunt, and then make the trip to a sampling station part of your hunt plans. You should also be aware of new baiting and feeding restrictions in Eau Claire, Chippewa, Dunn, Buffalo, Pepin, and Trempolo counties, thanks to a wild deer that tested positive for CWD in Eau Claire County back in March. The West Central District's landscape contains a variety of excellent deer habitat. Much of the western border of the district is within the driftless area, characterized by steep oak and hickory-dominated hillsides, with fertile ridges and valleys that grow alfalfa, corn, and soybeans. This area has some of the highest deer densities in the state and is also known for exceptional antler growth. Some of the greatest numbers of Boone and Crockett and Pope and Young entries come from this region. The district also has a great mix of public lands within the Central Forest Zone counties. Deer populations within the forested zone are not as high as in farmland areas, but hunters can still expect to find ample quality hunting opportunities. On the eastern side of the district, deer populations are robust as well, with most counties seeing an upward trend in deer numbers. The mix of agriculture and woodlots within this landscape provides excellent deer habitat with opportunities for hunters to take antlerless deer and have a good chance at a mature buck. Johnson's Sausage Shop in Rye, Wisconsin has been providing hand-me-down family recipes of meats and cheeses for over 17 years. Old world influences and modern practices combine at Johnson's to produce incredible meats and sausages. Their philosophy of buy local, eat fresh ensures the highest quality, taste, and sustainability. Johnson's provides custom cut, processing, and packaging of your beef, pork, lamb, or wild game. Their ability to cater to all requests has been keeping hunters from Wisconsin and abroad happy for years. Johnson's Sausage Shop. Eat delicious. The Ranger Ridgefield is already known as your ultimate shooting experience with 12 indoor lanes, a helpful and knowledgeable staff, and a great selection of handguns. They have now expanded into the long gun market, dealing in Benelli, Franke, Stoger, Winchester, and Browning. Located at the split of highways 41 and 45, the Ranger Ridgefield is a great place to sight in that old deer rifle or check out what's new in long guns. You now have a new option when it comes to finding your next hunting rifle or shotgun. Introducing the Stealth NXT, the narrowest and most accurate 10-point crossbow ever. Measuring an ultra-narrow 6 inches wide, the Stealth NXT unleashes devastating speeds up to 410 feet per second, generating jaw-dropping kinetic energy and match-grade downrange accuracy, all on a whisper-quiet shot, three times quieter than the competition. The all-new Stealth NXT from 10-point. You never know when you might need different camo, but who wants to pack it all? That's why there's VersaSkin's Multi Camo Outerwear. The VersaSkin's base jacket and pant come in real tree edge, but can be quickly skinned for waterfowling, blaze, or snow. VersaSkin's patented quick switch system lets you change camos within two minutes. So there's no need to buy or pack multiple camouflage outfits. VersaSkin's, just change the skin for the season you're in. Deer Hunt Wisconsin 2018 is brought to you by American Natural Premium Dog Food. Premium nutrition without the premium price. AmericanNaturalPremium.com By Vortex Optics. Welcome to the next level. VortexOptics.com And by VersaSkins. Just change the skin for the season you're in. VersaSkins.com Despite a mid-April snowfall that left up to 30 inches of new snow in some areas, most of the Northeast District experienced the fourth consecutive mild winter, and that led to strong fawn production. In the northern forest units, the buck harvest has been increasing over the last couple of years, and it'll likely increase again this year. Marinette County modified the boundary between the forest and farmland units, so hunters there should check the new boundary. As the deer herd continues to grow above sustainable levels, many central farmland counties are offering multiple antlerless harvest authorizations with each license. An antlerless only firearms holiday hunt and extended archery and crossbow seasons through the end of January. 
Door County is issuing five free farmland antlerless harvest authorizations with each deer hunting license again this year. Manitowoc and Sheboygan County Deer Advisory Councils modified the metro subunit boundaries in their counties, so hunters should check the new boundaries and season structure for this year. The counties surrounding Lake Winnebago have high deer numbers in places, but the habitat is patchy and fragmented, so hunting pressure is relatively high for the available cover. And as a result, overall deer numbers across these counties are not as robust as in some other areas. Chronic wasting disease has not been detected in wild deer in the Northeast District, and the district's southern counties of Fond du Lac and Sheboygan will be conducting weighted CWD sampling this fall. CWD has been detected in captive deer farms in Ocado and Marinette counties, and in two Wapaka County hunting preserves. The DNR will be collecting deer heads for CWD testing in Marinette and Shawano counties, as well as in the adjacent portion of Ocado County. The deer herd in northern Wisconsin has been increasing over the past few years, and that trend continues this year. A moderate to severe winter killed some deer in the far north, but overall, the northern herd came through the winter in good condition, and hunters should have ample opportunity to harvest a deer this year. Area biologists anticipate a moderate increase in the buck harvest throughout the district, along with a pretty good increase in the antlerless harvest, thanks to more antlerless harvest authorizations and bonus permits in all but Iron County. An increased antlerless harvest in the remaining northern counties will take the pressure off young bucks and add to the potential of seeing more mature bucks in the woods in the future. A good adult age class of bucks is expected this year due to the previous mild winters, but antler growth is not likely to be as good as last year due to the late winter stress that can impact both body and antler condition. There's abundant public land in county, state, and national forests, and active forest management in most counties provides good habitat for deer. Areas of prime habitat are centered around aspen clear cuts, where regeneration provides excellent deer cover. Scouting oak areas can reveal excellent hunting opportunities as well, especially in the western counties where there's an excellent acorn crop this year. Chronic wasting disease continues to spread across Wisconsin despite efforts to slow it down. Here's Brian Richards, a biologist with the U.S. Geological Survey, to summarize what we know about CWD. CWD, chronic wasting disease, is a fatal, neurodegenerative, contagious disease of North American members of the deer family. So in Wisconsin, we're talking white-tailed deer and North American elk. Chronic wasting disease is transmitted via uptake of infectious agent. CWD positive animals are shedding that infectious agent or rogue prion protein throughout their bodily fluids, including saliva, urine, and feces. So through close physical contact, including nose to nose contact, it's fairly easy to see how that infectious agent can be picked up by a healthy, naive, susceptible animal. So if you are doing anything, including baiting or feeding, which brings inordinately large numbers of deer into the same space and time, if one of those animals has CWD and is actively shedding that agent out into the environment, we enhance greatly the risk of transmission at those sites. In areas of southwestern Wisconsin, prevalence, or the proportion of animals that are CWD positive, has risen dramatically. In the north central portion of Iowa County, in excess of 40% of adult males now are infected with chronic wasting disease. So you get into these older age categories, especially of males, and if you harvest a three and a half, four and a half year old buck, literally it's a coin flip as to whether this deer has CWD. Hunters often ask whether they should be concerned and what type of precautions they should take regarding the consumption of CWD positive meat. The World Health Organization has been very consistent since the 1990s and recommends that no portion of any animal with a transmissible spongiform encephalopathy, including CWD, enter the human and or animal food chains. The United States Centers for Disease Control also has published guidelines and recommendations out there for hunters. Their recommendations are that if you hunt in an area where CWD is known to exist, that you strongly consider getting your deer tested. And if that deer tests positive for CWD, that you should not consume any portion of that animal. One of the most significant precautions that hunters can take is with regard to carcass management. 
we suggest that they take carcass parts to a landfill, make sure those parts end up underground as opposed to out on the ground where they constitute a disease transmission risk. Clinical symptoms of CWD don't show up until late in the progress of the disease, so a deer you shoot may appear perfectly normal and still be infected. The only way to know for sure is to have it tested. And the DNR has stepped up CWD monitoring efforts this year, and you can help by taking your deer to a sampling station. There are sampling stations in the CWD affected areas of southern Wisconsin and elsewhere in the state. Find one near you on the DNR website under keywords CWD sampling. Now here's retired DNR Wildlife Management Director Tom Hauge with his assessment of CWD in Wisconsin. I think most folks will remember back in February of 2002, we got the news we didn't want to get that uh, we had discovered chronic wasting disease uh, in our state uh, right along the Dane and Iowa County uh, borders and uh, 16 years have gone by already uh, since then. Uh, and I wish I could report good news, but uh, unfortunately the, the news isn't so good. Uh, we now have CWD in the wild deer population in 25 counties. And in 18 counties, the captive deer herds have been uh, affected by CWD. So uh, CWD is, is continuing to spread and grow in prevalence across the state. It's a bad news story. And the, the future uh, doesn't look good for deer hunting, deer economy, wildlife conservation in the state of Wisconsin if this disease is not, if we don't find a way to try to control this disease. So uh, we really need to be thinking outside of the box and we need to be looking for solutions. We also talked with retired DNR biologist Mike Foy who has an unusual proposal that just might help control CWD. You're probably talking thousands of sick animals now, maybe tens of thousands. And, and the obvious solution to me was to engage the Wisconsin hunter. I'm proposing a completely voluntary program, but where we pay rewards to the landowners, hunters, small business sample takers, to get these sick animals weeded out of a, an otherwise healthy population. Deer hunting is a big deal in Wisconsin. We're we're regularly ranked in the top 10 in the nation. CWD is not going away on its own. Uh, it's, it doesn't contaminate the environment, but it's not probably going to be forever. It's, it's long lasting, but we got to look at this as a long lasting problem, like paying them off a mortgage or a, a state bond. We got to be in this for the long run. So here's the proposal, completely voluntary. No regulations, no requirements. Don't force anybody to do nothing. You deliver a positive deer, the landowners will get a reward, the hunters will get a reward, and the small businesses that take the samples will get a smaller reward. At the Midwest Fish and Wildlife Conference, uh, Paul Smith asked the question, well, how much should it be? So I just threw out you know, what I still feel is a reasonable number, which is $1,000 to the hunter, $1,000 to the landowner, and $300 to the small business sample taker. So the components, will it focus hunter effort, increase hunter access in locations with CWD positive deer? Obviously that means the landowners have to be on board to help. Not that this is a hunter access program, it's not. Will the incentives increase positive deer harvest? We're not interested in shooting down all the deer. We want to differentially get those sick deer out of the healthy deer population, that's the goal. And then finally, will increasing positive deer harvest reduce CWD prevalence and distribution over time while maintaining a reasonable deer population for hunting and all its other benefits? They can't just say, you know, we don't want to invest the money in this. They have an obligation as trustee for all the citizens to protect our deer herd. Years of experience and success have proven that proper nutrition makes dogs happy and healthy at home and in the field. Dogs of all ages love American Natural Premium. You see it in their energy, endurance, and performance, and in their healthy skin and coat. Feed American Natural Premium, and they'll come running with bright eyes and wagging tails. American Natural Premium's carefully chosen ingredients provide premium nutrition without a premium price.
Deer Hunt Wisconsin 2018 is brought to you by the Range of Ridgefield, the ultimate shooting experience. TheRangeWI.com. By Ten Point Crossbow Technologies. Perfection lives here. TenPointCrossbows.com. And by Johnson's Sausage Shop and Catering of Rio, Wisconsin. Taking your venison from deer camp to freezer camp. Johnson'sSausage.com. The largest deer research project ever undertaken in Wisconsin is the Southwest Wisconsin CWD Deer and Predator Study. Now in its third year, the goal of this project is to examine factors that could impact deer survival and population growth in this area. Goals are to put GPS collars on 200 adult deer every winter, and then every summer, spring, we put 100 collars on neonates, babies. Do this for four years and follow them through time and see what their outcomes are. We're studying predators and how predators and deer may interact. We did a big uh, deer predation study in northern Wisconsin, Sawyer County, and then uh, we, for this we wanted to include that. And the, the pred predators in southwest Wisconsin where this is taking place are coyotes and bobcats. If you hunt in the research area of the southern district, you may encounter deer or coyotes wearing ear tags and or radio transmitting collars. These animals are legal to hunt, but if you shoot one, be sure to call the number on the tag or collar to report the kill and have a DNR staffer pick up the collar. Is it better to be strong or smart? Well, when you combine a class-leading 999cc engine with the industry's first and only intelligent four-wheel drive system, the answer is simple. It's better to be both. The Pioneer 1000 Limited Editions, the newest members of the growing Pioneer family from Honda. Want to be a better hunter, a better angler? Then subscribe to the best outdoor publication in the state, Outdoor News. You'll receive the latest outdoor news and information hunters want and anglers need. In each issue, you'll learn where the fish are biting, the best hunting spots, lake maps, tips from pros, and timely outdoor news you won't find anywhere else. Best of all, it's all about Wisconsin outdoors. Subscribing is easy. Just go to OutdoorNews.com or call 800-535-5191. Outdoor News is the sportsman's choice for outdoor information. Scent killer gold attacks a wide range of odors, but most importantly, human odor. To make things even better, Wildlife Research Center just came out with Hunt Dry Technology Plus. It's now 99% effective at stopping replicated human odor 20 days after drying in testing at Rutgers University. It's simple. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. Years of experience and success have proven that proper nutrition makes dogs happy and healthy at home and in the field. Dogs of all ages love American Natural Premium. You see it in their energy, endurance, and performance, and in their healthy skin and coat. Feed American Natural Premium, and they'll come running with bright eyes and wagging tails. American Natural Premium's carefully chosen ingredients provide premium nutrition without a premium price. Deer Hunt Wisconsin 2018 is brought to you by American Natural Premium Dog Food. Premium nutrition without the premium price. AmericanNaturalPremium.com By Vortex Optics. Welcome to the next level. VortexOptics.com And by VersaSkins. Just change the skin for the season you're in. VersaSkins.com Earlier in the show, we heard from both new and seasoned hunters who love hunting white-tailed deer. Here's a message from Dave Cook an avid hunter who unfortunately is now struggling with a rare form of brain cancer. His comments remind us all to make the most of the time we have on this earth. A year ago, last October 20th, <clears throat> I was diagnosed with anaplastic uh, grade three geoblastoma. <sighs> this is gonna be hard. I've been hunting um, since I've been a kid and um, have been hunting, you know, nonstop ever since. And um, yeah, now <clears throat> with everything that's happened, you know, I, just, I still get out. <clears throat> and you gotta, you can't quit living because you're dying. Live your life each day. Enjoy what you like. And if you want to get out and 
Go sporting clay shooting with Dan Small and kick his ass. Do it. Whoops. <laughs> we can bleep that out, right? No. no. Use that. <laughs> <laughs> use that. You'll find all the segments from this year's show and more on the Deer Hunt Wisconsin YouTube page. I'm Dan Small. Thanks for joining us. Have a safe and successful deer season.